about a year ago to some skateboarders that were uh, devastating the, the <coughs> Veterans Memorial Park and the plaza in front of the Veterans Building that we were going to build them. And I believe we approved the purchase of some equipment to put in there in two parks that I think it was uh, Dunn Park and, and Calaveras. Aguirre. Tony. Yeah. It, actually, we're talking about doing actually three, Dunn, Aguirre, and McCarthy. Okay. Well, where are we at? We told them a year ago it would only be a few months. Yeah. And we have this, the design is basically done for Dunn. Um, we'll come back to you for funding for the Dunn Park uh, facility, and then we'll come back to you. Probably the Aguirre Park is going to be a much smaller facility um, than even the Dunn Park. And then we're hoping, as Mike suggested, um, with kind of the Mark McCarthy Park area, it's sort of a clean slate and how to how to sort of meld all those facilities again. As Mike mentioned too, having them be hardscape is, is uh, really convenient. Um, the council didn't approve necessarily any um, a equipment to be purchased as part of the skateboard park. All the skateboard park equipment purchased actually went to the existing facility over at Veterans Park because it's a metal facility. Uh, um, the, what's being um, contemplated over at Dunn Park is all concrete and or dual purpose um, as as uh, Councilperson Luna suggested um, she wanted benches around um, the the uh, tennis court area and that's essentially what we have we have a, a, a facility that has and, and Victor <coughs> may remember this back from when he used to skate but benches and benches are, all, are good for both sitting and skating depending on how they're designed and um, what we're hoping is that we can accommodate uh, both group, groups depending on who have actually happens to be there. So I would suspect that we're probably pretty close in um, bringing um, a cost estimate back to the council and appropriation for uh, the Dunn Park facility. I want to also make sure that the, the folks, um, the council understands that um, not everybody in the Dunn Park area is completely happy with having a skate spot um, with, within the park. So I only think that it's fair and adequate to uh, uh, provide a 300-foot notice to those neighbors around Dunn Park, take it at least to the Planning Commission so that their concerns can be heard um, and before we actually bring it to the, the City Council. I have, <clears throat> I have, I don't want to say probably no more than a handful of concerned neighbors, but no, nevertheless, um, there, there are concerns. Um, if you'll recall, that's where I built the original one way back when in 1996 or 97. There, and those, still, and those neighbors, neighbors still remember uh, sort of the grief that they, they felt when, when the skate park was there for just the, that six months or a year. So um, that's where that's at. And likewise, I would do the same thing for McCarthy and Aguirre Park. Well, it's costing about $25,000 a year to keep the plaza in front of the memorial building clean because yeah. we can't and keep them off. And there. we will probably only ask for 25000 for Dunn Park, so like you say. Okay. Vice Mayor Gomez. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, um, thank you, Mike, for, um, for the update on the investments that, that we've obviously made. Um, I'll go ahead and start with um, um, Las Brisas Park and... Um, and obviously, thank you for the work that um, that you folks did out there. Um, I still, even though it's uh, a park in the northern part of my district, um, I still frequent it with, with my uh, five-year-old um, out there. I see Karen here as well. And thank you, Karen, for your leadership out there in the community. Um, I know it's uh, obviously uh, very important to have um, the uh, community input as we move forward with these projects. So uh, so I want to thank the uh, Las Vegas, um, uh neighborhood, uh, Nespers, uh, residents as well for their uh, input. Um, <laughs> regarding Valley View, I also want to thank you for your investments out there and, and, and thank the mayor as well. I know, Ignacio, you were very uh, supportive of uh, making sure that we did resurface the, the, the playground, excuse me, the, the water feature. Uh, that was very important. Thank you uh, to you, Mike and Billy, especially for, for your help um, getting that done. I know that uh, the community has been uh, very happy about it. Um, and then obviously all the other significant improvements that have um, happened out there. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to be biased here, and, and I don't know if there's a conflict. I live like, you know, five feet away from the park now, and um, I am going to fight you on the bathroom. Uh, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you that right now, and I'm trying not to be biased here because my kids could just run across the street and use our restroom at our home. But... Um, I'd love to get the chief's perspective on what he thinks of restrooms at parks uh, because um, I have concerns with that. Uh, drug use, um, other 
graffiti activity and, and other other issues that that lead to um, neighborhood problems. So, um, you know, you know, one thing that's unique about Valley View Parks, obviously because of the water feature, is um, is is that it's it's a city park, right? I mean, you can go to any park essentially and use it, right? You don't have to live in the neighborhood. But um, when you have canopies, like 15 canopies propped up in the middle of the su in summer, uh, last year I saw a couple of barbecue pits rolled off of trucks. Um, people barbecue, people barbecuing that, you know, uh, I know the neighborhood, I know my district very well. And, um, and you know, th there's a lot of residents that come from uh, other areas of town to use the park. And, and I'm excited about that. I think that's great. You know, we have an awesome feature that all of our residents in the city could use. Um, adding bathrooms is uh, definitely going to be uh, 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 definitely going to be interesting. So I'd love some community input on that before we move forward with that. Um, but overall, the improvements at Valley View have been um, have been awesome. They've been excellent. So um, I'm trying not to be biased here because of my skating background, but you know I, I think you do need to move forward with uh, community input um, at Dunn Park. It's not in my district, but uh, but skateboards do get kind of loud and I see uh, it could be uh, uh, obnoxious to a lot of uh, neighbor, uh, neighbors out there. So just take that into consideration. And then Clower Park, you know, Clower Park being in my district, please keep me in the loop as you have conversations regarding that park. I get a lot of email communications. I know that uh, Carson does as well for, uh, for uh, a good reason. So um, keep, it, keep us in the loop as you move forward um, with any kind of changes and improvements um, at, uh, at Clower Park. Um, I just want to make sure we're on, uh, we're reconciling our thoughts because I get emails from the residents and it may not be the same emails you're getting. So <laughs> it'd be nice to uh, share those same perspectives. Um, so anyway, thank you for your uh, report and I appreciate all the, uh, all the work and investment out there. Okay. Council Member Clower. Yeah, um, District 3 eagerly awaits its first city park here in the next year or so. <laughs> um, so I, I guess my main question is, do we have a plan on the books already for what that's going to look like? I know we're going to look at the development agreement, but I don't, we don't necessarily get to see what the, that plan looks like in the development agreement. So is there anything that shows what's going to be at that park? I, I, I believe we have some preliminary uh, designs. Um, but I've had some changes. Wait, that'd be that'd be nice to, to get a look at that, and then I don't, can we shop that to the district before we decide on the one thing that they get? <laughs> Absolutely, I, I will. I will forewarn you that the the park size as part of the um, uh, Lad Ranch project is not huge, um, and it's kind of in an awkward location, and that's one of the comments that. Uh, Mike pointed out right away is is sort of the um, how close to proximity the tot lot is sort of to the south side road um, and I think that we want to try to push it towards the inside of the development as much as we can so we don't have youngsters uh, running out into that street that's that's a major concern of Mike's and and to the cities but uh, yeah we, we we certainly can um, forward that to you and if uh, we also took it to park and rec We've taken it to Park and Recreation Commission, so I think that they've had a chance to take a look at it. That's one of the things that we're trying to work through right now, um, uh, not to get too far off the track, but sort of at what point <clears throat> do we try to get input from not only the staff, but Park and Recreation and prior to tentative and final map and how it all kind of plays into uh, each other when we're asking the developer to actually uh, to improve the, uh, the park site. So um, as we move forward, in, in going that direction, we are we're, we're learning as well as, as how what order people actually see things. But that's not a good answer. But I will give you what what we've looked at so far. No, it's helpful. Okay. And I mean that's a the area where that's located, or at least on the preliminary plan, is pretty low, and it's been pretty flooded over there the last couple of days. So just hopefully we'll keep that in mind. Okay. And then um, what's the process for naming a park? 
because this is going to be a, a yeah. naming option. All of our, right? all of our, the, the city council several years ago adopted a, a facilities naming um, policy and process, and I can forward that to you first thing in the morning. Um, there's been some discussion about um, naming the community center um, after a, a, a local person here in town and, and some of the other facilities. So we'll let, we'll, I'll make sure that you understand the, the process for, for going through that. Perfect. Thank you. And, and were you talking about the Apricot Park too? Because we also have a new park at the end of Apricot Lane. Is that in your district or is that Mickey's district? Smith That's Mickey's, Mickey. yeah. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure we're keeping the commissioners involved here, the park, park and rec. They're involved with your discussions. Give a report to them just Excellent. last week. Yeah. Also, the, you know, every, every neighborhood is unique and it's important to understand what they really want. It's one thing for us to say what should go there. It's another thing for them to say what they want. So I think uh, it's going to be important to get their input on that. The water features at the whale park, that button, they keep pushing to turn it back on and they slip as they come running back. Are we going to move that? Are we going to kind of change the layout on that at all so we don't have the kids <coughs> running across the sidewalks, falling down and... Actually, that button used to exist in the feature Excel itself. There were two metal plates on the ground that they touched with their feet to make it go. Um, in, in the rush to get things running last year, I didn't have any more additional time to research that. So let me get it with the manufacturer and figure out what's going on. For whatever reason, they abandoned that, and I don't know why. We did switch the button so it's not a button anymore. It's a touch feature. We could relocate that as a worst case scenario on a post into the area, um, but I, I, I personally would rather get the, the foot activated, activated switches back up and running. If you can at least do something, get it back on the other side. As I was watching the kids, you know, kid after kid was falling on their way back. Luckily, no one got hurt that I saw that day, but it's pretty slippery out there. Going back to the uh, skate park, the additional improvements on that. I think it would be a good idea to start on the Gary Park to the uh, to the west and see what kind of use is coming from there. And I think your discussions about the ideas at McCarthy are, are great ideas. But let's make sure we're really getting the input of the residents on what they want. Give them a list of items and see what the numbers are. That way, we we do what they want. So. Looks good. I'm excited to get the uh, other parks done, hopefully, hopefully this year. Yeah. So, thank you for the update. Thank you, Mike. No, keep <laughs> that one up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dave, you're screwing them up. <laughs> I merged them. <laughs> oh, now I got to go all the way through again. <laughs> Let's move forward to item <laughs> C, the capital improvement. Matter so, of fact, why don't we do this? Why don't we take, uh, when we hit 7.30, why don't we take a five-minute break so our students here can get their signatures and run out. Unless you guys want to hang out with us all night, you're more than welcome to do that, too. You get extra credit for it, by the way.
We'll move forward with item C, the capital improvement program update. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so at the same meeting, last meeting, I was also directed to bring a report on the capital improvement program projects. Now, this is going to be a high altitude report because I really can't talk about a lot of these things because I have nothing to do with them. But uh, here we go. Um, so as an overview, uh, the City Council approved the 2014-2015 Capital Improvement Program on November 3rd, 2014. In the same action, you appropriated $2 million from various fund balances to cover the projects. On August 17th of 2015, the City Council passed a resolution continuing those original appropriations um, because Capital Improvement Programs roll over several uh, fiscal years. It's common for you to roll the money over also. Um, and it also added some additional projects um, and, and appropriations, and that amount was $4.5 million for fiscal year 2015-2016. Uh, to date, 11 of the 25 projects have been completed. Additionally, 11 projects are in progress and are estimated to be completed soon. Uh, currently, three of those projects are, have been placed on uh, hold, and actually it's about 3.5 projects, and I'll explain that in a few minutes. So the completed capital improvement projects are uh, the Dunpark Tennis Courts, which was handled by the Planning Department and my Department Management Services, the Downtown Video Project, which was handled by the Police Department and the IT Department, the North Street Plans, which were handled by the Engineering Department, the Old City Hall Improvements, which was handled by the Planning Department and also my Department Management Services, the Park Man Monument Signs, which was handled by the Engineering Department and my department installed them, the Skate Park Expansion, which was handled by the Planning Department and also my department, the Road Rehabilitation Projects, which were handled by the Engineering Department, the 4th Street Lighted Crosswalk for the Courthouse uh, was handled by the Engineering Department, the Powell and Souter Street Sanitary Sewer Improvements were handled by the Engineering Department and uh, my Sanitation Department, the energy efficiency program for the industrial wastewater treatment uh, plant was handled by the engineering department and the sludge removal program which was also handled by the engineering department. Once again, all those have been completed. The, the projects that are in process are the upgrades to the San Felipe Road ditch that's being handled by the engineering department and my department. We were asked two weeks ago to go out and pothole for uh, utilities in the project area and locate them. Um, to help get the bid price down so we don't, you know, design a pipe going through the middle of a high voltage power line underground or something. Um, the airport project of the runway reconstruction, that started uh, last week. The runway's been removed. Um, they're in the process now of moving the dirt around and removing six feet of soil for the uh, lime treatment stage. Uh, the city fiber project, which is handled by the engineering and the IT departments, you have uh, accepted bids on that, and I believe the project's uh, start date is imminent. Uh, the evidence storage building, which is handled by the engineering and the police department, I believe uh, in-house staff is working on a design for that. The community center upgrade, which is being handled by the recreation department and my department. The uh, carpet is in place. Uh, the tile work has been scheduled. Um, we did place a portion of that on hold, which were the parking lot improvements. The original parking lot improvements that were designed to go in out there is not going to solve the problem, and we'd be effectively throwing away $60,000. So our hope is to combine that with another project and get more buying power and to go ahead and do a little bit of parking lot replacement out there. Um, what's going on is the asphalt design uh, is not sufficient enough to support the garbage trucks and the buses that go in there daily and it's if you go out there and look it's just destroying the asphalt in the in the pathway the parking spots are fine because they're not getting the heavy use so we're going to need to go in and remove that and put in a design that's going to go ahead and support that weight um, the police department and city hall server room upgrades are in process handled by the information technology department and my department the West Gateway Beautification, which is handled by the Planning and the Engineering Departments. The Sidewalk Replacement Program, which is handled by the Planning Department and a little bit by my department. 
the San Benito Restripe project, which is handled by the engineering department, the administration building um, improvements, which is handled by finance and my department. Um, we're in the framing stage for that. All the asbestos has been abated, um, and the design has been uh, approved by the uh, building department. And the Fallon Road well, which is being handled by the uh, engineering department. And then the three and a half projects that are on hold, the half project is, is the community center parking lot. Uh, the other project that's on hold currently is the police parking lot extension. So our goal is to combine those two projects together into a larger project so we get more interest in, in doing the work. The Park Hill tank repair, which is handled by the engineering department, and the well number four improvements, which is handled by the engineering department. Um, I was I was unable to get a reason for the Park Hill tank repair uh, for it being on hold, but the reason why the well number four improvements are on hold is cross town pipeline goes right through the middle of it, and those improvements are going to be part of that project. So there's no hurry on on taking care of that because it's already going to happen. So very soon you're going to see the capital improvement plan for uh, 2016 through 2021. And the following projects are proposed on that, and I don't have many details on some of these, but some of these I can speak to. Uh, the plan is to upgrade the water lines on Victorian Park. Currently, there's a four-inch water line in that area, and we're, we're going to upgrade them to a six-inch water line to improve service to those residents. Uh, install a, a bathroom out at Hernandez Park. Uh, go ahead and set some money aside to do a significant street tree replacement program. Some other areas of the city are just barren, where over time the, the trees got too big, they destroyed the sidewalks, and it's almost like a clear cutting operation went through that area. I'm thinking out near Prune, um, also the Sunny Slope Clearview area. We need, to, we need to go ahead and get some trees restarted in there. Hopefully this year is an indication that the drought is uh, busted and we can go ahead and get those trees replaced so they're growing. Uh, install disposal beds at the waste treatment facility. As I already told you earlier, the Brigantino Park ADA improvements, the Brigantino Park bathroom. A lift station upgrade to the GLP lift station. That's on San Felipe Road, um, about halfway down, uh, where they're looking at doing the new homeless center. Um, the airport has a small arms bunker that dates back to World War II that is 100% asbestos. We need to go ahead and demol demolish that thing and get it out, there, out of there. Fleet facility improvements, what that will do is allow our uh, staff to work on sweepers and fire trucks inside the building out of the weather. Uh, currently, those guys have to jack those things up on a slope, not the best situation, and work out in the rain if a fire truck goes down. Um, an evidence building for the police department, as I indicated earlier, a McCarthy Park design, membrane, membrane replacement at the domestic wastewater treatment plant, a refurbishment of Calaveras Park, stormwater upgrades at College and Fifth. As you know, that area always floods, and we need to go ahead and get a stormwater line out there to solve that problem. Um, Valley View Park bathroom, sorry, Victor. The storm drain upgrade at Bella Vista and Sunny Slope, also that area also floods regularly, and uh, it needs to be improved. Additional projects we're proposing, and this is just some of them, it's not all of them. Our storm grain upgrades for fourth and line, as you know, every time it rains, my staff has to go out and put out flooded signs. Um, let's get the storm drain extended from west side so we can solve that issue. Uh, more San Felipe Road ditch upgrades, that takes it on beyond where the current project is out towards the airport. Uh, the 6th and Powell Street uh, stormwater upgrades, another area that just has nothing. No, there's no stormwater line out there, and the water just sits. Six and San Benito storm drain upgrades. Uh, anybody who's tried to cross that street after it rains, there's a lake at that corner. And a Line Street sewer line upgrade. <coughs> and that's going to conclude my CIP report. Questions from the council? Councilmember Clower? So, where are we at with the sidewalk replacement exactly? Because I know we talked about that a long time ago. Plans and specs are just 99% done. Uh, there were a couple little tweaks that needed to be um, handled, and those should be done this week, and they'll be going out to bid. 
Okay, because my concern is, and I, I think I brought it up to the city manager like maybe six or eight months ago, is that most of the sidewalks, they're not emergencies, but there are situations where we should have gone out there and jackhammered it uh, a year ago. There's one at, uh, across the street from Java Express or Java Hut that is it's insane it's like a bike ramp that's on uh cushman and uh, nash. nash yeah, yeah. Uh, it, we're aware of that one that's outside the project area um we have to do that one and we're working on getting that fixed okay let's do that yesterday then because that that one's scary if i could just have a i'll give you a brief report too on sidewalk so what's interesting is the council also approved sort of this sidewalk rehabilitation loan program if you'll recall and some people have taken advantage of that program and, and the other interesting part of it is that some of the people that have uh, started to take um, uh, part in that program by the time they get down towards the end and the sidewalk is repaired and we we start to go ahead to, and do the process to put the deed of trust on their property they've decided to go ahead and pay for it, it, it it's it's interesting on and Mike's crew has already gone through a lot of the expense and, and removed the, the sidewalk and taken out the trees and whatnot which we're completely okay with if ultimately the sidewalk is repaired and it is nice so one of the things that we we've, we've done is we've combined a couple of things one is we've combined the original sidewalk project that the, uh, through the CDPG monies um, and, and those target areas. And then we're, we're going out to bid with a little bit larger project. Um, actually, a lot of the streets in district, in Mickey's district, in District 2, um, around, what's, uh, what streets are those? Um, uh, West 2nd? Uh, no, the ones further out towards. Um, the uh, high school? No, yeah. the Hill, Hill V2. Um, what is it? Um, Ranchito Court and Ranch some of those. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> We're expanding that actual project, not only using the CDBG monies, but some of the monies that were, we used for the sidewalk uh, loan program. Um, and it, again, in hopes to get a larger project, to get a little bit better deal, um, more uh, economies to scale sort of situation. So like Mike says, it, it's actually probably 99.9% .9 done. I would expect them to go out and hit e-bid board by the end of uh, this week. And so we'll be coming back to you relatively quickly to award that contract. So you should see some sidewalk repairs um, relatively quickly. Also in that sidewalk repair program is um, uh, a lot of the, I think, some of the some of uh, the rationale behind the, um, uh, going down the path that we did is a lot of it is getting repaired on Monterey, um, where you'll have some new uh, ADA curb uh, uh, ramps, and then also it, it just makes it a little bit nicer for kids walking to school. So we've taken sort of an approach not only to hitting those areas that are um, with the largest offsets, so to speak, but also that are paths that are most traveled, so to speak. So um, you'll see that it'll come up relatively quickly here. We're going to get that started. Okay. And if you'd like to see at least the plans on the sidewalks that are done, I can have Renee forward you uh, sort of an overall map of where they are. Uh, I can have her do that for you, uh, the council tomorrow. I'll have her send it off to you. Okay? No problem. I think, uh, how quickly can we get that one fixed? Oh, the on one Ash? Ash? Yeah. It's going to rain all week, so I can't do concrete in a week, but give me two weeks. What? Two weeks? Yeah, the issue is not only Nash, it's, it's all over the place. We've, we've talked about this for a while. So I think it'd be helpful to understand which ones we're, we're going after. And as we get the presentation for the road improvements, part of the holdup was when we're doing the roads, we can start taking care of some of these other sidewalks, the curbs, and... Um, other where the trees were ripping up the base of the street and the curb which brings up the other conversation of the person we're going to look for to take care of all the tree issues throughout the city so we're not waiting for the trees to destroy the sidewalks but rather be proactive and start removing a lot of those trees and being more um, stringent on what's what's being planted as far as the new trees we have a lot of neighborhoods that are great, beautiful trees, and you can see it now starting to rip up the sidewalks. They were too big for the area, never should have been planted. We're going to have a whole other way. But what's the first ones on the plan? What are the second ones, depending on those roads? So we can just have that plan, and we keep moving forward through it. You mentioned the drying beds at the treatment plant. Is that correct? I did. This year, I'm going to bring back the um, the islands, the floating islands, to have those conversations on how we can do it. Like an update on how much sludge was removed, 
how much is still in there. We can get a better idea of what was happening each year as far as with the six inches or 12 inches that were being added to the ponds each year. I don't want to let up on that. We're going to find ourselves in a situation where it's going to sneak up on us again and create the problem. The issue with the drying beds was, you know, a million dollars, I believe, 750 to install the drying beds. Currently, we had paid for an additional person at the sewer treatment plant to handle the dewatering station, which we haven't done for the past two years. We chose to go in this different direction. So we have to take a look at all those little factors in there because it's more than just adding drying beds. It's a, another person added onto the payroll of the uh, company that handles it for us. So I'd like to have that conversation with Floating Island again, see if that program will work or not. We can bring in different companies to have that discussion rather than ignoring it. That it keeps us from having to do more sludge removal because I believe there's another 12 feet of sludge in there. How much did we remove? How many feet? Uh, this was an engineering project. Okay. If, with you your know. permission, I'll pass it on. Okay, no problem. Just so we're going to have a, a deeper conversation about it, just so you're aware. Okay? Give my heads up on that. Council Member Luna? Yeah, I just have a question of Mike. Uh, Mike, you mentioned uh, replacement of water pipes. Yes, ma'am. And what area is that? It was on Victoria, um, Victoria Street going towards Rancho. Okay. And Victoria and Park. And, and you know that the topic of the nation today is replacement of water pipes uh, because of the issues on the water. So it may, it just we, it. we don't have those kind of pipes. I am, hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. Okay. <laughs> just, I just have to ask that question because yes, you mentioned the replacement of water pipes, and I'm thinking, are there any other areas in the city that uh, need that? Well, there, there, are, there are many areas. We're all aware San Benito Street needs a new water line, um, but we do not have lead water lines, plus our water's tested monthly, um, and all that's, all that's being monitored. And just to assure the community that yes. uh, we're okay on that. Thank you. Councilmember Friend. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea when we're going to stripe San Benito Street? We told the merchants five months ago we were going to do it the first time we had a sunny three days, and... We had two weeks of bright, sunny weather and nothing happened. That also is an engineering project. I could only repeat what was said in staff meeting, and I don't think that would be very fair to my colleague. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I, 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 what was said Here's was... Here's your chance. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I'm sorry. The update was within two to, two to four weeks. I, I don't know. I know we're top of the list as soon as they get back in this part of the state. They're down south right now where the weather's more conducive to uh, their business. Okay. Did you have a, any comment cards there? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Keith Snow. Speaking of engineering. <laughs> there he is. Uh, like Martin Santee and the weather and all that, Stripe and all that. And the weather in that way. The, like the airport, and, uh, it's a working airport when the rain. And uh, the one thing too that uh, about reducing the uh, money, like I talk about parts and all that. Marie Fan talked about Robert a while back. Is an emergency manager. Uh, once guys do like a suit and that's mentioned Mike right there, uh, go parts and parts. Uh, yeah, I guess they're gonna do like any training on weeds because then you get you guys focus on parks, right? So, parts for the kids in the future and uh, do things, but maintain a park costly mm -hmm. so what i'm mentioning mm -hmm. is a uh, are you guys to train spraying weed control uh doing our own gophers raise me that's a good one uh and get rid of gophers and stuff like that and i talked to another person too 
Uh, we tried to press and then we should press so uh, Paul, uh, there's a way that we can do our own roads. It's uh, uh, reducing the pain in that part too. So in the sludge and all that, uh, it costs a lot, a lot of money to remove. Uh, I did see that figure sludge. So uh, there's another company that can remove for cheaper too. Just got to shop around. Thank you, Mr. Snow. <clears throat> Marty Richmond. Um, Marty Richmond from Hollister. Maybe I'm behind the power curve on this. If I am, somebody correct me. Uh, the 4th Street, I'm glad it came up about water pipes in a different situation about 4th Street. You know, uh, you know we count so much on uh, uh, sales taxes to uh, support our budget revenue side on the general fund. Uh, why would anybody put something on 4th Street if they can't be open because the, the water pipes keep breaking? We have got to get that uh, done. And I didn't see it on the CIP list, and I, I'll give time for somebody to respond. And I understand maybe we, we, don't, we won't have the money to do it before 2021, but, you know, uh, we should kind of get ready. Uh, we shouldn't only uh, wait until we can actually do it. Uh, maybe we've already done it, but I think we ought to open up a, a CIP number if we haven't done it. And, and even if, if we, we, you know, chop at it a little bit at a time and, and, and start doing studies about what it would cost, start getting, you know, uh, within our budget constraints, start getting some estimates, start getting some time frames, so that, you know, if we ever trip over a $5 million bill laying in the sidewalk that we didn't expect to get, we can probably maybe do it, because I think it's absolutely critical for those businesses, and I don't have a business downtown, but I think, I think they must be pulling their hair out if, if I, you go down there and the, the, the street's closed, and the water's flowing down the street, and if you're running a restaurant and you don't have any water, and you can't use the restrooms because the, there's no water, it doesn't work very well. So I think uh, I can't see any, any really big, big time uh, outfit going downtown if, if you can't give them reliable utilities. You know, it just doesn't work like that. Second thing is, uh, and I'll, I'll go to the seat to get my comment on, I am so confused on the Brigantino Park thing, uh, CIP, I'm just up a tree, and I thought I did my homework, but I, I can't figure it out. Um, this may not be on the agenda for this thing, but what what is the deal with the spray? Are we still spraying in, in Brigantino Park? Uh, so if we are spraying, can we can we have a park if we're spraying? I, I'm so confused. Uh, I thought at some point in time we couldn't, and then we could, and then we couldn't. So mm -hmm. I'd appreciate it. Are we number one? Are we still spraying? Number two? Are we going to be spraying forever? Are we ever going to stop spraying in Brigantino Park? Uh, the good news is it, it's water. Uh, at essentially no cost. The bad news is it's water, you know, in the park when you don't want it. So thank you for your time. Thank you very I'll much. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Any other speakers? No more speakers, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Did you want to address any of that? <clears throat> I'll, 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 I'll try to address the the Brigantino spray field um, as best I can, and if I don't do a, a good job, Marty, please feel free to call me tomorrow. Um, it is absolutely still being used as a spray field. It's, it's our primary way of disposing of effluent um, from the sewage treatment plant. Um, I have, I'm, I'm the type of person that's overly cautious when it comes to use of that facility as it remains a spray field. Um, you know, it, it is treated water to Title 22, which is pretty harmless in the, in the grand scheme of things. However, there our permit requires that there isn't any standing water. Um, you're not supposed to necessarily come in contact with it as an individual. Um, so th there are rules that we have to live by. Um, the plan is, though, this, is that you'll, you'll recall the city of, of Hollister and the San Manuel County Water District entered into an agreement in which the San Manuel County Water District would um, sort of be uh, uh, the purveyor of, of uh, reclaimed water and they are going through their capital improvements right now. One of the projects actually t is taking place at our, one of our disposal beds on the um, west side of Highway 156. They're lining the bottom of the pond right now for clay, uh, with clay to keep it as a storage pond before they send it out on, the, on its way to, say, the McCloskey uh, uh, 
improvements and that water will then be used uh, on orchards and crops, <clears throat> which will then free up um, uh, Brigantino's area, or the current spray field, to be used, um, to be put on well water. That, that's kind of our goal. And once the well water is being used, it's, it's more or less a potable system. Um, it, it becomes, it, uh, there's no restrictions as far as its use. Um, my, my goal would also be to uh, uh, prepare a parks master plan for that because I know there's a di desire for um, ball fields and soccer fields and, and things of that nature. Um, I know that there are folks that want to do festivals and whatnot out there, so it'll, it'll free up a, that area to be more of a regional park um, with no restrictions um, other than it, uh, unlike what it's currently right now. So. What's, what's the timeline? Oh, we, we probably, um, well, we, I know we have a major festival that's trying to, to start in October, and I would, like to, I would like to have it all kind of settled at least by then. I bet all the improvements don't, don't take place until probably the first part of next year, but we may be off reclaimed water by the end of this year. Thank you for your Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move forward with item F13. Annexation agreement. I do have a question uh, with at this point with the uh, issues going on with the county and the judgment from the courts on the agreement that the county had with the annexing properties into the city and as I understand it a lot of these agreements have been overturned now so there is no agreements out there until we restructure or renegotiate agreements with the county is that correct in if in, in in essence that is correct there had been a master tax sharing agreement between the city and the county that had an element of it which was a payment that the city was required to make in order to take on the annexation that part was found to be uh illegal or not illegal it was found to not be uh authorized by any uh, state law and a condition in the contract where the county could come and take the money out of the city's account with the county for property tax was held to be again not allowed under state law that master agreement now is for tax sharing has been invalidated now these pro these can proceed but the the applicant needs to know that the city and the county and they can either wait until a agreement is made between the city council and the board of supervisors and have another master agreement or they can be negotiated on an individual basis so it's not like some of the questions that have been made to uh, Jill and Abraham, Billy, well, the eleven thousand fee was the eleven thousand dollar fee was disallowed, so that's gone, and we just move on. No, that's not the case. The whole uh, tax sharing agreement, the master one, has been invalidated. So, if these are to go forward, they can't be finalized until we have an agreement. You can take action, 
and then the then the tax sharing agreement can either be negotiated on a case by case basis with the county before it's finalized or there be a master tax sharing agreement so these if you approve it they're not the annexation does not instantly move forward final um, subdivision maps are approved and you know construction begins that that won't be the case we still have a remaining step to do councilmember friend i think it would be uh, appropriate for us not to approve these because we're about to get into the negotiations that this mentions the master it mentions the master it's June 6 2011 agreement which has been invalidated and we're going to rene renegotiate that tax sharing agreement uh, to fairly represent what the city's cost is of annexing these people and the cost I don't think it's fair to move this forward because that person may may not be able to develop once this is once this is changed it may be a whole new ball game that he has to come in and say I don't want them to develop in that way because right now uh, they're, they're developing in the county because it's cheaper than in, than going into the city and the reason is is because they're not paying for the city services they're only paying 25 percent of the bill and 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 if that if that was the case that the applicant could say no thank you at that time too this does not if, if the you know, I'm not taking I'm not making a recommendation whether to pass it or not I'm saying legally if you act tonight and uh, and adopt it does not mean they have to annex it means that they're you're approving it subject to this last condition that an agreement but for the sharing of their property tax between the city and the county is made at some point between now and when they begin construction if they choose not to pay it they would just be able to say no thank you we're just uh, you know like the Verizon tonight we're decided to head in another direction thank you very much and, and walk away but is it fair to put the staff through doing more work and then get to that situation staff we, will be doing the work excuse me I didn't mean to interrupt or is it better to get to the understanding that we need to get to with this study that's being done right now and that conversation with the county so we're we're clear on what the and I, I split think, would be I think having half a dozen a dozen developers standing there yelling at the county it might give us a little uh, negotiation levity that we can say well it's time to redo the deal well my thought was that I don't know if the actual individuals are here uh, on, on this item and the next would be to ask them what what they prefer uh, but but I agree with with what you say. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the the general plan of both the city and the county is set up to encourage residential growth in the city, and where where the municipal sewer and water services can be provided, the comprehensive police and fire, you know, er, you know, and not, uh, you know, go across an imaginary line on a map and and not use sidewalks and I mean some of the developers or some of the annexations that are further on in the program tonight are talking about they're outside the sphere of, of the sewer system also so now we're even talking that expense and I there's no way we should be even talking about that without uh, renegotiating the uh, tax sharing agreement I think it might be helpful for all of us to have the a study session understand exactly what the previous deal was so we're clear on understanding the dollar flow back into the city from these developments as we move forward on some negotiations with the county I think it is premature to be working out some deals here only to find out that we don't have a deal really with the county and we're going to put the developers or different people into a bind until we get that that situated Is this something, are these items that we should be tabling? Or that would be, my, we, that would be my recommendation. We can table, we can process it, you know, and you could even deny it now without prejudice to bring it up. Uh, 
I w again, I would just, you know, I don't know what the wishes are of the applicants. Okay, are the applicants here? Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. I'm Doug Lenamore, representing the Katie Ainge Group. Um, well, I guess we've got a handful of things here. Um, speaking on the annexation and uh, tax sharing agreement, if I understood you correctly, um, there's a possibility of negotiating an individual agreement sp specific to a, a certain parcel, like for this piece of land, correct? Correct. The, the, they could be done on an ad hoc basis or an or an overall uh, tax sharing agreement, okay. a master agreement. So, as I understand, the lawsuit was primarily um, it was objecting to the roughly ten thousand dollars a unit fee that I believe went almost exclusively to the county. Um, if you were to move forward with with ours and uh, recommend uh, the annexation, at least it would open up the possibility of us being able to get into a steady session or working with staff to maybe come to an agreement with the county on this individual piece of property. I think once the tax sharing agreement gets opened up, I think there's going to be a lot of different uh, items that the county and the city might be negotiating. So if you were to take an action to approve this this evening, at least it would enable us to um, maybe come up with an idea that would work for, for everybody. Um, and then I'd like to just uh, quickly, so that would be with regard to item number 13. And I'm not sure if we're opening it up separately for 13.1, but if you decide to postpone a decision on item 13, I'd still like to move forward with item 13.1 because that involves the, um, the pre-zoning of the property, and there's a lot of work that went into that as well. And I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's I a... I have a question of the okay. city council. council if, we, if we came up with an individual deal that, that, that meets the city's requirements or meets the city's needs for the annexation, What's the chances that the judge is going to say, you don't have a master plan, we don't accept any of that? He seems no, you, to want to get in our business pretty good. You don't have to do a master agreement. Uh, you can come to an agreement on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, it's not done in most of the counties, or sometimes it is when it when something is different or unique enough and there's a reason to depart from the master agreement uh, you know it's it's like we may be in that position sometime for some of these infills you know where there's just a lot that's surrounded by by the county uh, where the person's annexing not so much for uh, to develop he's annexing he or she's annexing because their septic tank failed and they want to get sewer service and as part of a lot of those annexations you'll come in so why should they pay an eleven thousand dollar fee to you know simply uh, you know formally be in the city well, instead if, of being in the county if that's the case wouldn't it be appropriate for this to come back to us once the agreements made yes exactly you would be you would be deciding on the uh, you would be deciding on the the record at that time whether you wanted to go with an individualized tax sharing agreement or the master tax sharing I was going to bring up after these matters I'll bring it up now but I've been called by mr. Bickle who is doing the development on Chapel and Maple who's kind of at the stage <laughs> he's he's like one meeting before you had approved it so everything was done based on the old tax sharing agreement and now that's been you know, been thrown out so, so just so we're clear there, there's several projects there's several in the pipeline projects. and we have the same problem over and over i don't want to get into situation. no but they're all in different places right but i don't i personally don't want to be in a situation where we're negotiating deals for each no. different project either we have a a structure worked out with the county or we don't and i think it's uh it's going to prolong this process if we keep working towards 
approving separate deals, and it's going to perhaps cause us problems ourselves. How many months are you from um, doing construction? Uh, we're a ways from that at this point. I mean, we're just trying to I asked if how far is he away from, from doing construction. construction. I don't want – the urgency is working out the deal with the county. As far as construction and everything else, that, that's a different issue. Well, it's, they can't get there. You know. The study is, uh, I think, supposed Last to be done. Thursday. The Last study Thursday is complete. Yeah. Excuse it's me. pretty close to being complete, about a month away or something. I don't know. It was the LAFCO meeting that they, the contract was signed. Uh, there is a staff meeting Wednesday, Billy and myself, the CAO, to give direction to uh, BAE. BAE. Um, for, for what exactly are they studying? Uh, you know, our costs. There's, our costs are in share, yeah. in share in agreements. Is there any other questions from council we can open up to the public? I would, I would just like to maybe table it and move forward to a study session where we could learn more about exactly right. where we're at and where we're going with this because then it involves quite a few developments, and I feel that everybody has come to us uh, to this point in time. And I just feel in order to move forward, uh, I believe I want to know more about what is the current status of, of this. Okay. If See I can, then I'll, I'll step in and say this. I, I wanted to try to keep next Monday night um, really kind of focused on, on pavement and traffic, but we can add a third item, which is sort of a, a, a more informal discussion about um, uh, the master property tax sharing agreement. Um, we will have already had our meeting with BAE. Um, we'll kind of we'll let you know how that went, so to speak. And then, so if we want to talk about it a little bit more on on Friday, um, I mean on Monday, March fourteenth, that would be fine. I would suggest though um, that going through and adopting, and I probably shouldn't say it now. Maybe I'll I'll, I'll wait. But we. Going through the pre-zoning and, and, and sequel process is not going to be an issue at this point. And, and taking care of that business does stay f save ta staff time and your time in the future for just bringing it back. But annexations, um, I, we can bring that back on Monday, and, and we'll give you a, a, a kind of a tutorial on how that works. And you'll give us a thorough breakdown so we're full sure. understanding the history from what time to what time, <clears throat> percentages, and how it affects the city. These are very important discussions. And mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons we've had financial problems for so many years. If we're not getting our fair share, it hurts the city in the long run. This has been, as you know, my, uh, my complaint for, for a while now. So let, at this point, let's open it to the public. Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Keith Snow. What kind of boundary changes will be made? Will this cost and how much? Please explain. It figured pretty in a right in the SAG right with the C County. And it figured the only, like I said, only here you guys want a special brand and want to sell here with the county in the city. So for a fact is I'm taxing for you in there. I mean, it's good to settle, but like how much money are you gonna pay? So that's the only part. You're, you're in a delicate situation right there. And he won, they won the case. See, 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 points, right? So that's the figure dollar amount. So the points, right? I won't want to be a cheese, but, but the points, right? You want to do it. Fast or next week or whatever, we can figure you can prolong it. The point is right, it's a do the summit thing. How much money's in cost? Thank you. Thank you. Speaker Marty Richmond. My remarks have nothing to do with any particular um, project or, or annexation or anything. It's just general. Uh, yeah, I think you ought to put it on hold because I believe it's my problem. <coughs> uh, having attended 
several county meetings concerning this, that this is going to be somewhat contentious. I mean, after all, there's money involved. Uh, who's getting the money? The county. It's clear that several uh, county supervisors have made no secret. They've made public statements on the record during the county supervisor board meeting that they think they're being cheated uh, out of money, that uh, that these developments are costing them a fortune, even though they get, they get uh, under the current agreement, they get 75% of the property tax. Uh, I think a good case could be made that uh, the, the city is getting shortchanged, and it's so when everybody thinks they're getting shortchanged, uh, sitting down and getting an agreement is going to be a little harder than maybe you might think. And so I, I expect it's going to be contentious, and it may last a while. So I think you'd be better off on the annexation portion of it, uh, tabling, tabling it rather than putting it in front of uh, where they have no idea what it's going to cost and trying to negotiate individuals. Remember, you can't negotiate by yourself. This has got to be a three-way negotiation. So you're looking at a three-way negotiation times as many, as many people want to annex. That's, that may be a difficult uh, road to travel. Um, as far as the uh, any other thing like CEQA and uh, things like that, if developers want to do that on their own dollar with the understanding, the clear understanding that there's no guarantee that a ta the master tax agreement will ever get done, although one will get done eventually, and eventually maybe who knows when. Uh, I don't see where we have any risk, but we have to be clear and say, yeah, you can go ahead, but you understand that you, you absorb all the risks. We can't promise you there'll be an annexation. We can't promise you there won't be. We can't promise you anything until we do the negotiation. And as long as that, that's clear in the record, they understand it's their risk. I don't see any problem with them going ahead. But on the annexations, I, I would agree with what appears to be the consensus of, of uh, the council that you should uh, just uh, uh, let, let it go until you, until you get some, uh, some agreement, uh, or at least uh, uh, an outline. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do we have any other speakers? No more speaker cards, oh. Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is there any more questions or well I just have a little comment kind of agreeing with what Marty is saying is that we are talking about money here and I think to get the process off the dime and maybe actually get some movement from the county the fact that we are talking about money and they're not getting their money until we do these annexations might help us get the negotiations done just a little quicker I, I doubt it but it would you know I hate to play games with somebody's project but that's 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 how I feel that they're not they have no reason to want to read redo this tax and in, in any other direction other than what they were already getting in fact they're complaining not getting enough then so. okay at this point is there a is there a motion I make a motion that we hold this Ta a motion to table to future date so there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4 0. 13.1. Thank you. There have been no changes to the proposed ordinance. Staff recommends to by title only and adopt ordinance 1176. This again would be another annexation. I make a recommendation that we uh, hold this Let's, one. Please. This is just a pre zone. Uh, honestly, and this is you're going to be okay doing this. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would not. I would not recommend um, uh, not doing this. This is just one of the formality parts. Um, all you're doing is doing a pre-zone for a piece of property that, if and when the, this property ever becomes a part of the city of Hollister, you've taken appropriate action and you've pre-zoned it to its appropriate designation and taking care of the CEQA um, and, t and taking care of the CEQA um, uh, requirements. So this is absolutely okay for the council to, if if it if it is your desire, um, you can feel comfortable with not getting down the wrong path with annexation taking this action. Is there any speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Keith Snow, he asks. You had a motion. Is the property in the, the public notice oh, of the newspaper? Me. Like it said, like he's more saying, now saying, 
season on there and make a halt, work it out, and say the nothing. So the point is where you want to be on the edge. So like I said, make a halt on everything. Thank you. Do we have any other speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Doug. Just very briefly, um, as Mr. Richmond indicated, you know, we've spent a lot of money um, doing all the environmental studies and such, so we would prefer and ask that the council take action on this item. We understand that until the tax sharing agreement is finalized, we're not going to get annexed, um, but we, we would like to have you take action on this. And, and I will withdraw my uh, uh, recommendation because I, didn't, I, I thought this was another annexation on the sorry. Thank you. Okay. Is there other speaker cards? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve um, item 13-1. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. 3-1 vote. <laughs> we'll go to item 14. I'm going to excuse myself from this conversation. I have property within 500 feet of this. <laughs> I will pass it to the vice mayor. David, go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, item uh, 14 is a um, is a uh, approving a subdivision improvement agreement for the Lad Ranch development um, and authorizing the execution of the agreement with for the improvements of Calvornian at Land Ranch LLC. Uh, this Lad Ranch project is a 82 lot subdivision. It's located at um, uh, south of Southside Road between San Benil Street and Lad Lane. Uh, this project um, was uh, approved by the Planning Commission on August 28, 2014. There were no appeals by either the applicant um, or Planning Commission or anybody else on that. Uh, so uh, what's happening with this item is that you'll be approving the subdivision improvement agreement uh, and that's uh, basically the, the last step for them to, uh, to continue and, and um, you'll get this, uh, get this project completed. Awesome. Thank you, David. Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, Vice Mayor. Keith Snow. He says, what kind of improvements will be done? And that's one I thought we'll read for him to uh, the, the, the other process in Mary, uh, the, one, the one that I mentioned with all the other uh, developers and so all that to create for the kids. But thank you. Okay, and to uh, answer his uh, question about what type of improvements are gonna be, uh, in, um, be done out there on that subdivision, uh, the uh, south side road is going to be uh, completely uh, completed between Lad Lane and San Benito Street. Uh, that's uh, in the improvement agreement covers grading, all the paving for the in interior of the roads, all the concrete for sidewalks and cross cutters and, and uh, curbs, uh, sewer, water, uh, any of the storm drainage, uh, landscaping, irrigation, utility trenching, and uh, uh, any of the other uh, improvements that uh, are standard requirements of a, of a subdivision. They will also uh, be paying into two reimbursement. Um, the Samuel Street Sewer Reimbursement, that's the one that um, that uh, Benchmark put in down San Benil Street to serve their project. Half of this project will be served by that sewer line. The other half will be going up to um, 
a, uh, uh, a different route and they'll be paying a, uh, a total of about $46,090 uh, $46, uh, towards that uh, Crestview and Valley View uh, sewer reimbursement. Um, the San Beto Street sewer is $91,861 and that is actually the first cash reimbursement of that of that uh, sewer line that we put in uh, but you know get right down to it basically what this does is it guarantees that uh, that the uh, subdivider will uh, do all the improvements as required by the tentative map uh, once the final map is signed and recorded great thank you david any other speaker cards None? no okay no. and bring it back to the board any questions from the council Okay, none. What's the pleasure of the board? Um, I'll move that we approve item 14. Second. Uh, motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. very much move forward with item 15 which I'm gonna have to recuse myself again I had a I have a working relationship with this this group so I'm once again gonna pass the gavel to the vice mayor I guess I should have looked at that before. Thank you. my apologies yeah no worries um, great so we have item uh, 15 which is the um, annexation agreement between the city and um, uh, and uh, Community Housing Improvement Systems and Planning Association, Inc. Chispa. Yeah. And this is a very similar situation to the last item that we discussed that the council decided to uh, table until f uh, a future meeting. Um, staff's recommendation would be to do the same thing with this particular item to be consistent. Again, we will have a study session item on March 14th to give uh, you folks <coughs> an overall of the uh, uh, what has happened in the past um, with the master property tax sharing agreement and where we are today. Great, thank you, Billy. Do we have any um, speaker cards before we take up the motion? Yes. Um, Keith Snow, he is for doing business with the county, but will we benefit? Are we paying money? And I'm wondering, uh, is he uh, ain't that the one that uh, can be the four by housing and all that? The development and all that? And he's by? You didn't it a while back and Bill can ask that question. And then you uh, vice mayor. When the youth was helping build the builders with the construction before our same kind. Is that the same company? And and then and that's one for four hours, right? Um, I don't. I don't want an open dialogue, uh, Keith. So just keep going, and we'll answer your questions when you're done with your comments. I was, I was mentioning that too. So like, uh, what I mentioned there too, and, and that's all I gotta say. Thanks. Thank you. Any other speaker cards? No. 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 I'd, I'd like to make a motion then to postpone this. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Second. Motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 3-0. <clears throat> okay, thank you again. Move forward with item 16. I've just been told that I'm up on this one. Uh, there, there are two matters that uh, came to city attorney's attention over the past year. Last, last year, prior to the um, the rally, there was a an urgency ordinance that was um, adopted, which cut off alcohol sales at midnight. And the, the chief of police said that that contributed a lot to his being able to. Uh, save labor costs uh, that he, he was able to you know basically have the rally closed up uh, shortly thereafter 
uh, it, this started out as something making that permanent, but the suggestion was made by the chief that you know closure by midnight would uh, probably only be a a few minutes to the bar owners, but that would be with the the peace officers that he's going to have working for him over time and scheduling you know that the scheduling part would would make it much easier for him to realize those same same costs and have the um, you know the alcohol problem if it is in so far as there is a problem with it uh rectified earlier and not have his guys having to stay quite late and then uh, double them back to next morning to be starting a shift um, I would defer to he, he uh, as the you know the, the safety aspects of that and um, and the other matter was the California legislature adopted some rules and regulations that were to be allowed in the regulation of massage parlors. Uh, we have a couple in town now uh, that uh, if they were to have exceeded the, the scope of the state law that uh, uh, we wanted to bring our city code to match the um, the state law, so that we're not, you know, getting somebody who could, you know, play in the margins, so to speak, and uh, that if if there were any actions uh, that were a little less than kosher, that our, our police would have a better better able to do it. Most of the cities have brought have brought their <laughs> codes in line with the state. Uh, what it requires is that massage therapists be be certified um, and uh, that that kind of an inspection to do that then uh, the police have those those rights under our code which okay. is a lot less than having to get arrest warrants and search warrants etc okay. there any questions from council uh, chief the only issue I'm looking at as far as the alcohol sales is if the establishment is to close by 12 you're going to need more time as far as the um, closing of the of the alcohol sales a little more time maybe 1130 so they can actually close by 12 is that going to be an issue or would that well yeah we, that? we sort of thought about that and what we kind of came up with is when we we actually lowered the time to 1130 then they would say no we need to actually close at 11 that's when our 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 uh, last call would be so my recommendation is to keep it at, at midnight and um, for our purposes the establishment would be closed for business at midnight and if they wanted to make last call at 11 30 that's that's up to them but they need to be shut down um, by midnight okay okay so just so had a, I just friend. wanted to make sure I understand that because a couple of them have asked me questions. So the established will be closed and emptied at midnight. So it's yeah. not last call at midnight. It's yeah, alcohol closed. sales and the business close that have um, sales licenses by midnight. Yes. Okay. Hey, I have a question. Yeah, uh, Chief. Is it half an hour before or is it 45 minutes prior? To for what for, for the last call last call um, usually is a half an hour before sometimes they make it longer yeah the last document I saw was 45 minutes yes okay. yeah but just for, for sake of clarity you're not asking for a set time for the last call you're just asking that the establishment by midnight has to be closed if they chose to sell a drink at 1155 that person needs to consume that drink and finish it before or Correct. leave it there before 12 as everybody needs to be out. That's exactly what I'm okay. asking, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Key Snow, we should overlook and regulate these types of things. For example, the gaming center and the Lucky Shopping yeah. Center. And, the, and one thing I didn't know we have in South Park's and see gang. And I know people I know people don't want to be poor. 
with our needs they know I go. Uh, there were a lot of friends, many before, and easy like a boarding and uh, another program that uh, the northern province survive, uh, and that's there. I don't know if I'm exhausted. I can like what? Another five years? I know. I know all that works. We should regulate that. That disease is not that. And things uh, we should overlook all this. Captain or C uh, and Candy for per transversity. I know it's hundred percent and all that, but but massage powers that like I to put my head back like what? And that's one thing you have to overlook. It's for the alcohol and all that. And then that's like Nevada. The, these are two different issues, Mr. Sir. And, and, Alcohol and, and, is not served in the uh, and, and the but with the massage parlor, and then that, that runs, right? Did you have with, a question oh, exactly on this issue? So, Okay, the one thing is we should regulate that. That's We do have regulations now. We're just... No, regulate means oversee it. Like uh, have nursing nurse over there. Uh, have uh, overlook things. I mean, still like that. Still like <laughs> the the thing the gain gets another the gain thing, but from respond from p p back from p on it away there. But uh, can miss it to the to the, the which but but my sauce parts do a different thing there. You should look at what it means. I mean, what how they do things, and who own the operators and all. I mean, the point is that's to, to a deal in the bar or whatever, and not also broken, and then should be 3, 3 a.m. in the morning. But that's all about to, to a category there. I mean, to be smart and not to ability. Thank you. I do you know, have better logic. I do have friends on. Thank you very much, Mr. Snow. Thank you. Is there any other speaker cards? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, just for clarity, Mr. Snow, there are set rules for the current establishments. We're trying to update to meet new state laws out there that will help with enforcement if there were issues out there. The alcohol is a completely separate issue. It's just for the uh, the motorcycle rally for the July 4th dates only. And just, again, for the public to understand, this would mean all establishments serving alcohol would be closed at 12 a.m., the very latest, and all patrons would have to be out of the facility at 12 a.m. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we approve item 16. Ordinance numbers? Uh, there's two ordinances. There's ordinance number. Ordinance number 1127. 1120. The other one is uh, 11 ordinance 1128. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Against? Motion carries 4 0 vote. Move forward to item G A report from city council, council members regarding their committees. Council Member Luna. Uh, yes, there was a gang convention meeting I was unable to attend. Okay. Is that it? Council Member Friend? Yes, I have a couple committee meetings that I attended. Um, first was March 3rd. We had the Hollister San Bernardino County Fire Protection Advisory Committee meeting, um, which discussed was the election of officers. Uh, we had a station update on station four. I believe that's what it is on low. Uh, three. Station three? Yes. Station three, I'm oh, sorry. Um, we're looking at February 2017 for that to be established. Uh, the chief went over his plans for career development of the firefighting group. Uh, we went through the equipment status, which is pretty scary when you look at the number of equipment that we have that's out of order or under repair. 
and then the fire chief's report included uh, the number of calls, the, the type of calls that they called had, and uh, that was that was the end of that meeting. The second meeting I attended was the San Mateo County Intergovernmental Committee. <clears throat> the things on the agenda that were established were uh, the election of officers, uh, uh, the wayfaring program funding between the city. Uh, they're going to come back to the committee with a funding development program to where they can fund the signage for wayfaring. Uh, then there was a, a long discussion about residential growth within the city of Allister and impact fees of those. And then the next meeting, the county is going to present their plan on residential growth within the county. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about impact fees again. And uh, that was the end of that meeting. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Gomez? Nothing to report. Okay. I was also part of the intergovernmental. A lot of work going there to try to understand where we're going as a community as far as the growth. Great presentation by the staff, City Hollister staff. Really gave us a good picture of growth over the last 30 years, I believe. Bill, you uh, had the staff from the 1960s. I was pretty impressed by the work that went into it. Also had a meeting with LAFCO, and at this point, as was pointed out earlier, there is a, um, a ruling from the courts that we do not have any annexation agreements any longer with the county, and we have to work that out as studies being done to help us develop what those cost-sharing numbers will be, and hopefully we'll have more information on them the next a month or two months and come to an agreement with the county so that we make sure that if there are, is growth going on in the county or the city neither entity is losing any money from it also had a meeting today with the homeless issue the camps will be closing at the end of this month it's been very uh, successful over the winter season both of the uh, homeless camps or the um, shelters were pretty much full through the winter season. The county has found a parcel of property that they're in negotiations to purchase to build a permanent shelter and we'll have more information on that in the next month. That is That concludes my reports. We'll move over to item B, informational reports from City Council. Councilmember Luna. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on February the 29th, um, a Bill Bear was present, and um, and we had a meeting with the Board of Equalization, Fiona Ma, uh, the director from our region, and two staff members were here at City Hall. Um, Cheryl was present as well. Um, it was a very interesting meeting regarding the city uh, sales tax. Um, there was a complete report that was given to us and I know that I gave the numbers the last time and the numbers have not changed in according to uh, some of the vendors that came from the to the rally in 2014 and 2015 um, there's some unknown there's some that are registered with the Board of Equalization and the majority um, there's quite a few that did not pay their taxes. So uh, it was very interesting to, to hear our director uh, with a major concern about this and actually wanting to do something about it. So I am sure that she will be here uh, along with some staff members uh, for the 4th of July rally. I also wanted to report that there will be on March 22nd, I, along with uh, members of the planning, a uh, couple of members of the planning department will be meeting at the Hollister Community Center, and we're inviting members of the West Side community area to give them an update um, in regards to what is com coming along in the planning for the West Side of Hollister. Uh, of course, anybody can attend, and I would like to see more people there. Um, I know some of you might have received also a notice from PG&E. Uh, I found it to be very important because 
They're going to begin meter inspections uh, throughout the city of Hollister on April the 11th. It's going to be conducted for four weeks. So just to uh, information for the public to know that if they see uh, PG&E staff around their homes looking at meters, it is because uh, it's a required inspection that they have to do. And they will be doing these inspections again on beginning April 11th for four weeks from 7 in the morning to 5 p.m. on Monday through Saturday. So just for information purposes for that. Thank you. Thank you. And please, thank you. Please make sure they do have identification. A lot of people do represent themselves as PG&E staff that they're not. Uh, so please, if someone knocks on your door, that they have identification. Council member or friend. <clears throat> Just to carry on that, thank you for bringing that up, Mickey. Sure. I got a report from PG&E also. They are not going to be going to the doors. All they're checking is from the street to the meter. They're just making sure that it's clean, no no roots in it, no gas problems and everything. Uh, and they will have ID tags that they're wearing. So I know the chief has been unnotified too because he's probably going to get a lot of calls about people walking around in the yards. So, um, uh, the other thing I have to remind is March 19th, the, the American Legion is having an all-veterans dinner Saturday night. Um, veterans are free. Other people, $15 a piece. And it's chicken, tri-tip, music, games, fun for all. So uh, uh, that's more. I have tickets if anybody's interested. Uh, I'll be more than welcome to sell them to you. So that's it. Thank you. Vice Mayor Gomez. I have nothing to report. Thank you. I have a, um, I've been invited as part of a delegation of mayors from the Silicon Valley to visit China, uh, several cities in China to try to work out some trade deals with different um, companies throughout China. We're going to visit 10 cities. City will not be paying for it, so don't worry about that. But I would like to see if we could put together some literature or something that I can take and uh, promote not only the city but the county, our airport. I know a lot of these companies are looking for locations to in Silicon Valley, so I'm I'm hoping that I'm hoping we could put something together before I leave. This will be in late May, I believe, um, the 20th or for about 10 days. So if we can work on something, May 20th. I'm leaving, I believe it leaves May 20th. Okay. So I think I, the presentation at the airport, whatever facilities we have that I can yeah. promote agriculture, you know, I think it's an opportunity. I'm hoping that uh, we can make some, some friends and really get something going here. What, um, I hate to take this time, but what we'll do is we'll prepare what we have from an, um, what we do for the entire county, their, our economic development sort of program. <laughs> You know, the airport has gone through recently, and, and we've done some nice brochures. So we'll lay it all out for you. Um, I know it gets heavy in traveling. It, it's not really convenient. So I'll let you take a look at what you want to take, and then we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that's available. Yeah, if we can get something on um, YouTube or anywhere, something we can yeah. really get out there. And mm -hmm. I'll be doing a, giving a lot of speeches out there. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. okay. And I'll talk to you more about that. Yeah. China, China already owns us, so I'm sure we could sell them. <laughs> we could sell them something. Yeah. Maybe we could bring Boeing back. <laughs> There's a lot of, lot of opportunity and a lot of opportunity even with ag in, in our area. Uh, city manager. <clears throat> yeah, I have a, a, a few things this evening that I'd like to um, discuss. Um, Ray briefly mentioned the, the wayfinding program. Um, it is online, and I will get the council members a uh, uh, thumb drive of that particular program. Uh, program. What I'd like to have done is, is maybe if you take a look at it, uh, give us your comments. We'll try to incorporate those 
Um, the whole idea behind that is maybe in the next uh, 30 to 45 days, we have the city council sort of accept the plan as a, as a whole. You're not adopting it. You're not committing yourselves to anything. But what I would like to do is at least have the council um, accept the plan, uh, set a set and send a message to the San Benito County uh, Board of Supervisors and to San Juan Batista to make sure that we're still all on the same page. Um, this was a cooperative effort um, right from the very beginning with all three agencies, and I would just like to have that continue. <clears throat> um, I, I would also like to thank Mickey uh, for uh, bringing, uh, or Councilman Luna for bringing uh, Fiona uh, down with members of the BOE. It was the first time that we've had the opportunity uh, to have representatives from the Board, Board of Equalization come down and discuss sort of the uh, issues that surround um, the rally and how sales tax is being paid um, from a point of sales perspective as opposed to where their home business is or even their out of state licenses. So um, we have, we've had. I think I, a fairly firm commitment that they'll have representatives here this rally, thank God, is like the first time we've been able to do that in the past. They didn't really care too much about us, but now we, we, have, uh, we have a little foot in the door. So I wanted to uh, thank Councilman Luna for that. And again, I think it's important for us to really get a handle on um, not only the vendors, I, I, I want to say this, not only the vendors that are coming in, uh, sort of our transient vendors, but also um, uh, the businesses that do business here 365 days a year um, uh, and, and, the, and the business that they actually um, partake on, on during those three or four days during that, uh, during that part, of, part of the year. Um, again, study session next Monday, traffic mitigation fees, the pavement and uh, pavement management system, a great presentation on that will be first, and then I will add the property tax sharing agreement. I'll get you uh, the current agreement and the, the report that went along with that. It's a lot of reading, um, but I think it's important for you to just have, um, we'll try to do, Brad and I will we'll get together and we'll try to do a, a, a brief presentation um, and get you up to speed as, as quickly as we can on that. It, it, it is. It is complicated, um, and as some people mentioned, it, it was an agreement that took years in the making. So we, we hopefully we can uh, uh, we can get through it much quicker. Um, I think I've landed on the third Thursday of the month uh, for the youth council to meet. Um, we're just trying to figure out now what times, but this room seems to be available at that time. Um, so I'm going to be getting with those commissioners or the youth council that you've uh, selected and, and have sworn in, and we'll figure out what times or regularly scheduled meetings. Uh, the first meeting, we'll probably talk a little bit about what is expected um, on both sides, not only from the, the, the youth that are participating, but what their expectation is of me, at least initially. And, then, and, and getting the bylaws um, sort of wrapped up and, and have that be their first order of businesses to make sure that whatever they establish initially is going to carry on and, and into the future. Um, some of the um, uh, things that um, uh, the mayor hit on real quick of, about the homeless and, and sort of the efforts that have taken place there, um, just uh, sort of a newsy thing is that over the last several days, we've had a uh, different amount of crews um, in the river cleaning up trash um, and debris, not only from um, homeless people, but just what accumulates by people illegally dumping. Uh, Forty-two and a half tons of material has been removed from the river uh, to this point. Um, so a significant amount of uh, uh, debris has been removed. Um, just, just to prior to essentially the river is actually running um, relatively well right now. So it ha that hasn't happened in a while. So it's a good thing that we got some of that stuff out there, out of there when we did. We still have a lot of cleanup on the west side of the river to take care of adjacent to the Brigantino Sprayfield area. Um, and we will be getting to that as weather permits, but um, a, a majority has been taken care of. And then the best news of the evening I would say is that um, late last week we, we received word um, at least for me, is that um, uh, S&P, our Standard & Poor's, our, our credit rating um, for the city of Hollister now is an A+. Plus. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's um, when we issued our bonds uh, several years ago. <laughs> I've never gotten an A, period, let okay. alone an A+. Plus. Um, this, is my first, and this might be my first one, and I've got to give all the credit to the council. I didn't do anything. Um, no, really, this is, it's, a, it's a pretty important because um, when we first issued our bonds back in 2006, the, the city didn't have a very good credit rating. We were rated at a triple B, uh, uh, triple B minus, which is just above 
uh, what some people would consider maybe junk bonds. Um, we were shooting for a triple B plus at this stage, um, and, a, and we jumped up another three spots. So um, what that really essentially does for us is uh, it's just like a credit score in your, in your personal life. Um, it looks like we may even get a, a better rate. Um, our insurance will be cheaper. The cost savings will be much more. So um, the council should be proud that they've, they've taken actions, and, and, and it's basically everything that you folks have done um, up to this point that's gotten us to the to the level where we're, we're now, at least in that segment of our operations, we're at an A-plus. So I'm, I'm ecstatic about that. Um, and if anybody wants additional information on that or the actual credit report, I'd be more than happy to uh, uh, give it to you. But um, we're doing good. So That is very good news. It's, it's very good news, yes. Okay. And, oh, and we will be pricing within the next two days, and we should be closing by uh, hopefully at the end of the week. So that's good. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> wow. City Attorney. No, I just was going to echo what Billy said, that we'll be getting together, because when you said you wanted a complete, I really don't think you want a complete. You want to go back to the Knox Cortese Act and a complete history, but we'll put together a, we, we need, we a need thorough. A, we need uh, a thorough understanding, <laughs> right. because this is what's going to change the path for our future. And if we don't have that understanding, we can make some mistakes again. We don't want to. Yeah, simply re renew on a consent agenda like I think it has been done in the no, past. Absolutely not. Okay, thank you. Chief? Yeah, I have a couple of things. Uh, last Friday, Junior Giants registration opened up. And since last Friday, we've had over 150 kids sign up for that free program. But better yet, we actually had about 22 parents sign up to be volunteers, to be coaches or team parents. Um, this is obviously the very early stages of registration and we're way up from last year so that's a really good sign for our community and really also tells us of the great need for programs like this um, moving on uh, we've got a couple more um, activities in in our community that are coming up uh, May 14th is the 5k foot pursuit downtown registration is also up in that as well um, this is the first one and I'm actually kind of surprised how many people are, are going um, I think we have about 100 now, and to put that in perspective, um, Red Ribbon um, doesn't make 100 until probably the last couple of weeks, and then they all kind of show up in the last couple of days is when they start registering. So we're kind of way up on that. Um, again, May 14th, downtown Hollister. It's on a Saturday. It's um, to benefit uh, the families of fallen officers and, of course, our own Explorer Post as well. And lastly, April 23rd, um, a new... Uh, a new event for Hollister, um, it'll be at the high school, it's called Rocket Into Scouting, and it's a, uh, a Boy Scouts recruitment uh, event that will allow um, either a Boy Scout or a Cub Scout to bring a non-scouting uh, boy to the event, and for $10, they get to actually build rockets and, and shoot them in the air. There'll also be some presentations from the other um, Boy Scout uh, groups there such as Pinewood Derby and some archery stuff so um, really cool events um, they're either free or, or very very cheap um, to keep our youth involved in something positive in our community thank you excellent city clerk actually I do have one thing I would like to bring up and that is um, walk a mile in our shoes is going to be held Saturday April 9th and I know that um, We've had pretty good participation from our council and, and staff, so I just want to remind you to sign up early because you get the best shoes that way. So again, that's Saturday, April 9th, 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you very much. H, I, J, and K. There's motion no to adjourn. Business. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. The motion is second. All in favor? All right. Motion carries for a vote. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. <laughs>